Need enough of my porridge in the morning. Surprisingly quiet with the goats. Good morning DIY farm followers. That's a bit of a mouthful. Today it's a bit of a different video. I, yesterday, or well, this week, I've taken off our first lambs, our year old hoggets, um, to the abattoir, plus also two of our boars. So there's lots going on. Um, and if you stick around to the end of the video, there's some unexpected arrivals. I seem to say that far too much, but these ones were expected, just not quite the day that they arrived. So uh, it's end of lives, start of lives, and flooding. Enjoy. Morning. Prepare to see fully grown human being stampeded. Okay, if you watch this, I'm going to make a dash before they see. Good girl. Come on, come on. Okay, what's this down here? Oh, I haven't really time, got time to do the milk for the goats yet, so I'm gonna do that in an hour when I get back. This is the point where things can get stressful. So he's one of the ones we want, he's just gotta go all around. Momentum going. There was no reason why they couldn't just walk through, but they just worked themselves up a little bit. So I ended up just catching one at a time and walking them through. I considered loading them last night. I probably should have done, and they would have been calm. Which is what I did with the pigs last time. Anyway, it's done now. So, onwards. Hey boys. And that's that. We haven't crashed the trailer into anything. They went in calmly. Calmer this end than the other end. Unfortunately, I got it a bit late. Uh, I was told, get here half eight on the phone. Apparently half six to half seven next time, which is good with me. So we've got two pigs to bring up on Friday. Same place, and fortunately it's a different days, so I've got to drive over again. 
Well, it's a bit of an early start. You probably can't even see me because I've only got the GoPro. Why can't I hear a lamb? Well done. Steady. Oh, I can see one. Right. Hello, dude. You doing well? He's this guy. Right, that lamb is as uh, good as I can get it right now. I've got to get these pigs in, so I'm running behind now. Come on. Come on. Good lad. Here you go. Come on. Come on. Come on, here you go. Come on, boys. I only need two of you for today. Those two for two, aren't they? Right, you can actually go back out now, buddy. Alright, so last job for these lads is they get a bit of body piercing before they go. They get their um, tag, which I've managed to find in the dark this morning. Well, it's not coming out. Now they walked in nice and calm, having their breakfast. And apart from the fact we've still got a light out. Don't know why I hit it, it's not gonna help, is it? All right, we made it in fairly good time. It is half past seven. Electricians are getting to the cabin for just after eight to start the last little bit. Most of the time they just follow me in or they'll just walk through. And quite often they're just inquisitive because they can hear other pigs from other farms through there. So hopefully this is gonna be one of those times. And I'm new to all this, but paperwork wise, every time you move an animal, uh, you need to register a form to, to, to notify that you're moving it, even if you're just buying it from a breeder or a farm and just moving it to you or you're selling. Uh, and this is the same when you're sending to the abattoir. So for the movement of literally me driving here, I had to fill in this paperwork. And this, because it's an abattoir, you're also saying, um, that it's had no medication that needs withdrawal periods and it's from a UK farm and you know you basically need to give a bit of history on those pigs um, and the same with the lambs earlier in the week so you have to fill in one of these and then that's what I hand over when I get the pigs out. They're going to be going back with our lambs from earlier in the week to the same butcher uh, they're going to get delivered on Monday and I'm going to go and see them because I really want to see everything before it's cut. So like getting your homework marked you know. Right, I'm back. Let's see how these lambs are doing. What's going on with your baby? I think it'd be all right. You can see how his head, his head's kind of turned back. I imagine, well, he obviously came out okay on his own, but he could have come out not quite right or been stuck there a while. Why have you got no strength in your legs? All right, it's been a long day of plumbing and electrics and all sorts, but I better fill you in because we've had some more arrivals again. Not straightforward, but I came out this afternoon with roses to show her this morning's ones and she spotted these in the corner. They're pretty small, but they're strong little things. So these are our first south downs. And this mum here was, well, let's just say she wasn't particularly maternal and not doing her job, but she now is actually letting them hang around her before she was just trying to run it. Just run away as far as she could. 
So I need to get in there and iodine these navels. They are just tiny. Oh. This one here has been doing okay and feeding okay. This one is struggling still, but actually when you get him up, he'll stay up. So that's my job this evening before I nip home. He's had some, but no way near enough colostrum. It's probably worth taking some off her and giving it to a, giving it to him in a bottle. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get in and milk this one. We'll have another pint, please, Eden. No, no, no. Uh, okay, go on then. He will take his lot. All right, unfortunately, we haven't brought any lighting over and we're already on the little GoPro. Eden is drawing off a load of milk now, and then that way we can bottle it. And because it's taken the bottle really well, like far better than it was even attempting on her. And she's got just oodles of milk, so Eden's going for it here. That's it. Need enough of my porridge in the morning. Yeah. Probably shouldn't be lying down on his side. So she goes in there. Oh, you're gonna your hair. Alright. Oh, what a wet. Soggy weekend. Hey Maggie, not sure the dog actually cares. Even the pigs have stayed in. Come on girls! Here they come. Matilda's back tomorrow. Oh look at the state of it in there. Alright, try not to bury too much of it. I think they're okay. Well, there we go. We're back where we started, back during the wet, soggy rounds. So the four lambs that went off um, will be coming back with the pigs. The pigs, the uh, live weight of the pigs, the last time I weighed them was about four weeks ago and they were 105 kilo, uh, maybe even more. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were probably 120 by the time they went uh, and that's big, that's too big for pork pigs. Uh, but these are gonna be primarily sausages and bacon. And therefore, depending on how fatty they were, how fat they were, which I don't think it was too much, but they can start putting down quite a bit. But they were wintered pigs, so I don't know if that means that perhaps a little bit less fat because they've used it more to say, well, who knows? But when we go to the butchers, I'm gonna have a look. Then we'll make a decision on exactly what we're going to make from them. And uh, these girls behind me, uh, I don't think any of them make breed standard, but I will triple check before we make a decision uh, because they will, of course, be going as well because they're full size. So we're going to have a bit of a uh, glut of pork and sausages. So we really, really need to concentrate on trying to get some customers sorted for that. So we were very unprepared for lambing. I don't know why, because we knew it was coming. The goats are obviously still in the next bay. Uh, so we were kind of using hurdles over there, but I think we're just about gonna manage. And I'm just fingers crossed we have no more lamb today. But let me give you a little walk around because so far we've had three used lamb. Not one of them has gone to plan. Although that said, I haven't even seen any of the lambing. Uh, they've got on and done it themselves. They've all lambed out here as a group. And then as soon as I've been able to see, I've been taking them and putting them in pens. <coughs> the problem is, we keep clins. 
Uh, which are these girls here who are the best mums in the sheep world. And what happens is sometimes these pregnant ones jump into mothering mode. And that's what happened this morning. So this shearling here, it's her first year. She had twins. When we arrived, they were down here on the floor. She was off with the group and there was a clin licking them, cleaning them, chatting to them, which is not ideal. So we luckily we were able to tell quite easily who it was, the mum, because she's now a little bit hollow on her side. And we could see from her back end that she'd still got a bit of the afterbirth there. So she came off into the pen. These guys look pretty lifeless now, but I've managed to finally get them feeding. So what, apart from just being a not very maternal mum, I was trying to get the colostrum going. Absolutely nothing. Normally they seal over a bit, the teats. Uh. Couldn't clear it. So what I did in the end is I got a really fine needle out of the uh, lambing box. And I had, it took a while, maybe two or three minutes to try and clear it carefully. Obviously you don't want to cause any damage. And then it comes through and that like liquid gold yellow colostrum started flowing. The good thing about these South Downs is they're tiny, they look feeble, but they do know they're feisty, they know how to feed. So both of those I've managed to get on, not for long enough yet. But I'd say they're two or three hours old, so we've still got time. I'll give them a rest and then we'll get back to it. And I'm just hoping that over time she'll start warming to them. But I haven't seen her clean them at all yet. But she does let them feed, or at least when I'm in the pen. And then over here to yesterday's arrivals, another not very maternal mum, um, but some lively kids. So she gave birth in the middle of the day and she was stood by them, but she was facing the wrong way and then legged it. So she, again, hadn't bonded, but seems to have got a bit better. But she doesn't really talk to them, but she does, you know, let them feed and stuff. So hopefully that's okay. And then finally on to our best mum so far. Bag's like a dairy cow, so loads of milk. She's got two boys down here. Um, both an okay size, but one of them has just been very, very wobbly since it was born. So not, not good at all. Um, he has got his head up now. That's the one that's lying down. He would take a bottle last night. So Eden's managed to milk off maybe half a litre already. Um, would you mean topping him up that way? Because he hasn't been standing and feeding. So I think he got enough colostrum, but I just need to hope that he can get enough milk in him today to keep going. So like I said, it's kind of a waiting game for these. And I'm just, it would be really nice to not have anything else arrive today. We've got one more pen over there we can use. If we have any singles, we can probably split these up. We've only got six foot hurdles, which are pretty huge for a relatively small breed of sheep. And especially if it has, has a single. So I can just cable tie a, a divider in and that will immediately double our capacity. Anything with a blue dot. So it's one single clean. And I think we've got three or even four South Downs expecting one. We can have a pen for four or five days and then hopefully we'll be able to kind of move them out on as a group ideally outside if it got dry enough we've got all those field shelters so we can make do the other thing i found is underneath the south downs their bag still has quite a lot of fleece around it which is a bit mucky and maybe I should have tried to clip them a bit more a few weeks back. 